How's it going guys? Welcome to a very special birthday episode of uh, whatever whatever it is that I'm doing. You know what? One of you guys come up with a really good name for... Uh, the, somebody come up with a name for the weapon test videos and also for the build videos. And if it's good enough, I'll pick it and I'll use it and I'll give you credit. Uh, could be really good for promoting your YouTube channel. So anyways, today we're going to be testing the spear that I showed you how to make probably close to a month ago. It's got the blade made out of a lawnmower blade. This is from a shovel and this is just a pine rod, I believe. And then at the end here, we've got some steel piping as a counterweight slash uh, bludgeoning weapon. And then we've got this hockey tape wrap here that is used to find the center of balance. And also for grip, obviously. Concerns. If you guys watched the build video, you'll remember that I made a mistake when I measured the slit that I cut down the pine rod. So this part right here was supposed to be all the way down here. So I'm a little nervous that it might break right here, but you never know until you try. And also another concern is when I was looking online to see what kind of woods you can use to make the shaft of a spear out of, I didn't see anybody using pine. So I don't know if there's like a problem with pine, if it'll split really easily, but again, I don't know that until I try it and break it. I'll start by just doing some target throwing, uh, and if this weak point up here can survive that, then I'll try to do some power testing. I'm gonna be making the target out of this really thick styrofoam. This is just regular styrofoam, it's not that really dense stuff that I was using for the bow and arrow test, but it's because I'm using this mostly just to catch stuff, not really to show how uh, much power a weapon has or anything. I'll just be cutting some rectangles out of this and putting them inside this box, and hopefully they stack up uh, pretty well and they fit in there pretty good, and then I'll just close it off and that'll be my target. The pieces stacked up about as close to perfect as I'm probably gonna get. So now I just gotta close this off and then I'm good to go. And then for the power testing, the Spear's first opponent is gonna be some 12 millimeter birch plywood. And if it can break through that, then we're gonna move on to some 22 gauge steel. If it gets through that, we're gonna do some 1 16th inch aluminum. And if somehow it's able to make it through that, then we're gonna try some 16 gauge steel. I'm not sure that it'll even be able to get through this thing. Uh, but I'll be really happy if it can get through there. And I know what you're thinking, Eli, who is your landscaper and how do I hire him? But really though, we're in a transitional phase right now, a transition between not freaking wanting to do any yard work and maybe possibly one day doing some yard work, so don't judge me. And in case you were wondering if adding a counterweight to the end of the spear reduces the ability to throw it straight, uh, don't worry about it, just find the center of balance on the weapon and just throw it like you would a spear. After watching that last footage, it kind of seemed like I almost just dropped the spear right into the box. Like, it seemed like I was standing right in front of it. I was farther than it looked like in the video, but just so that you can see that the trajectory of the spear is straight, I'll throw it again. Not at anything in particular, just into the grass, but just so you can see that it's flying straight. Alright, test number one, 12 millimeter plywood, one hand. Alright, we got a little dent right there, and it's kind of splitting on the back a little bit. Let's see what we can do with two hands. It's just about the same, this stuff is a lot tougher than I thought it would be. Let's, uh, let's see if we can go until we get a penetration with it. So we're getting some really deep gashes and cracks and stuff like that, but just the structural makeup of plywood with all the grains running in all different directions like that, it makes it so that the wood doesn't split like regular wood, wood, chuck, chuck, if a wood chuck could chuck wood. And I mean, that makes sense. That's what this stuff is made for. It's and that's actually pretty cool because, uh, spoiler alert, I was actually planning on making a shield out of wood pretty soon uh, for people that don't have metalworking tools. And I was trying to decide between regular wooden planks and plywood, but it's pretty clear I'm going with plywood now because as you can see, I was slamming that spear into this thing as hard as I possibly could and it's not doing much, so that should be a pretty effective shield once I make it. But anyways, let's move on to some 22 gauge steel. It just started snowing and it's freaking cold, so I'm just gonna mercy kill this thing really quick and I'll try to do the other things if this works out, uh, but I'm not worrying about technique or anything. I just wanna see the actual penetrating power of the spear. So we did get some penetration. I'm beginning to think that the 
problem here is that the box is acting like an air cushion. So I'm just going to put this on the ground. Hopefully the ground isn't too frozen, uh, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get a lot more penetration without that thing bouncing around. Got about two inches of penetration. See if we can do anything more and then I'll move on to the piece of the stop sign. Got about the same. Let's move on. Oh, it's so cold. We did get a tiny bit of penetration, and this is extra encouraging because this is the stuff that my armor is made out of. Hopefully you can see this on camera, the spear is not yielding, it's not curling or anything. And I'm not going to be too hard on the spear because I didn't really make it for like penetrating armor or anything, it was really just to like, I don't know, fight zombies or whatever I'm doing these days. But uh, as you can see, it does punch through the aluminum a little tiny bit. It's probably not even worth testing it on the 16 gauge steel, but I'm going to do it anyways just because I said I would. I'm not expecting much from it, uh, but here we go. That was actually about as much penetration on the aluminum. I guess it's because the aluminum is a little bit thicker, but I would have expected it to just bounce right off this thing. Sorry, my lips are like freezing right now. All right, I'm gonna do one last test really quick. I mentioned that the counterweight doubles as a bludgeoning weapon, so uh, I'm gonna put that to the test. Oh man, my fingers feel like they're gonna pop. Safety first. This stuff just keeps falling over. I'm just gonna have to do the mercy kill thing again. Just a little bit dusty, but basically no damage. There we go. So call me crazy, I think we figured out the issue with using pine. In all fairness, you're probably not supposed to be swinging it like I swung it that last time, but something that is kind of concerning that I just thought about. The spear did seem to hold up pretty well when it was just thrusting, but if by some strange chance the wood did split while you were thrusting like that, it's kind of spooky to think about. If you're holding it like this, and this bottom hand up here is up here, and then you were to slam the thing down and it split, and then this comes up and stabs you in the hand. Ugh. That would be pretty disastrous. So I've got to look a little bit further into this, uh, figure out where I can get some better woods to use as the shaft of the spear. So in summary, the spear is great for throwing, probably pretty good against unarmored opponents because I threw it and it sank all the way to the base of the blade. I have no doubt that it would be able to penetrate into unarmored targets. Uh, but as for armored targets, uh, you could see uh, even with the really thin 22 gauge steel, it only made it about 2 inches through and that's not lethal. I think the rule of thumb is that it has to be beyond 3 inches in order to be lethal and 2 inches doesn't cut it. Uh, and the other things like the 16 gauge steel and the 1 16th inch aluminum, it was even worse. Uh, they were comparable to each other but it just wasn't good enough. So. Uh, that summarizes the front end of the spear, then the back end of the spear, the blunt end. The thrusting is also really effective. I have no doubt you'd be able to crack a skull with that. I definitely wouldn't want that thing getting thrusted into my head. Um, but as far as swinging it, don't do that if you're going to make it out of pine. In fact, don't make it out of pine at all. Like you saw, it was really dangerous. Uh, yeah, just don't make the spear out of pine. But I think that's about all I got. I'm gonna be doing some research on different local woods that I can use instead of uh, pine so that I can make the best weapon possible for you guys. I wasn't able to find anything better than that though, so um, yeah, I guess I just gotta do some more research. Uh, that's about all I got for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.